get something to drink. Get some water. I really should have written something down before recording this video, but I didn't really plan out nothing. Just me putting up the camera once again, just talking to y'all. Got a lot of things to say, a lot of new things, a new environment as well. As y'all can see, y'all haven't seen this room before. So I'm just getting right into it, man. I don't even know where to start, but I'm gonna just start. Want to thank y'all for 50,000 on the channel, man. Um, by the time I'm recording this video, we're already past 53,000. So uh, I'm a little bit late. Apologies for that, but I wanted to record a video for 50,000. You feel me? Do something special. Now, I'm just address the elephant in the room. I got my own studio, man. 50,000. I wanted to, you feel me? Like invest in my craft a little bit. I've already told y'all to, to, to invest in your craft. You feel me? Celebrate things. Treat yourself a little bit every now and then, occasionally. That shit feels crazy to say, but I got my own room. You feel me? I can do whatever I want, record a video whenever I want, 6 a.m. at night. You feel me? But saying that out loud doesn't really feel real yet. You feel me? And I don't want this video to, to be emotional. I just want to talk to y'all, man. Like my journey on how I passed 50,000 subs, how I started, where I'm at at life. Just talk to y'all, sit down the camera, have a conversation with y'all. I know y'all can't talk back, but so like I said, I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna just start talking, just see what comes to mind. Um, like I said, this shit doesn't even feel real at this point. Uh, I uploaded a video at the beginning of this year, I believe January or February, something around that period, where I recorded a video, a studio vlog with my boy Edward Leak. Shout out my dog, man. Um, but in that video, I didn't leave that in the video, but I was just recording all day. Um, I'll have the video pop up in one of the corners, just a studio vlog. But after we went to that, that studio session, um, I was walking home. I didn't have no driver's license, no car, no nothing. It was raining. I believe it was snowing back then. And I remember it being 12 a.m., 1 a.m., somewhere around midnight. And I was walking back from the bus stop to my house. Um, like I said, no car, no nothing while it was snowing. And I really had a, a conversation with myself um, when I was walking back home. And I just remember walking back home from that bus stop to my house. And I had all my equipment with me, with my backpack. My backpack was heavy as f bro. I ain't even gonna lie, but I had my laptop and my camera with me. And I remember walking back in the snow uh, and just pulling out the camera. I don't know if I still have the footage. I'll take a look at one of my hard drives, but I remember just walking home in the snow, pulling out my camera and just, I was just recording myself walking home. I, it was like a, a 30 minute walk. And that shit really made me realize I had to lock in, I guess. I was already going crazy, you feel me? I was already uploading, but really like speak some, some stuff into existence, you feel me? Not really manifesting, but just to, to have a conversation with myself. And I remember recording and, and talking to that camera and I told myself, I'll have a car, I'll have a driver's license, and I'll have my own studio at the end of the year. And the day I'm recording this, today is October 13th. I bought my first car this year. I'm 21 years old. I didn't have my driver's license before, but I got my driver's license this year. I bought a car. I was able to buy a car. And now I got my own studio. And I also just past 50,000 subs on my YouTube channel. And that's just really crazy because in January, February, when I was walking home in that snow, that little little realization, conversation with myself, it just felt so far away. It didn't even feel feel realistic for me to, to, to speak that shit into existence, if you want to call it that, you feel me? Just to say that I'll have my own studio, say that I'll have my driver's license and my car, a car, by the end of the year. But I did it, man. I, ain't even, I don't even know how it happened, um, but, Things can change really quick. You feel me? Your life can really flip around real quick, man. Like for real, man. Like it even it even surprised me. You feel me? I'm still surprised. I'm sitting here by myself, knowing that this is my studio, that I get to do whatever I want. It still got a hit. You feel me? Like I, I don't even I ain't even I haven't even processed everything yet. You feel me? I wasn't even planning on telling you all that story. It just came to mind. You feel me? That's why I wanted to set up the camera and not really plan anything out for this video. But yeah, as y'all can see, it's still a little bit of construction going on. We've got a lot of boxes over here. Um, let me just show y'all the room real quick, man. And that's also the reason why I haven't been posting for the last week. Um, Cause I've been working on this studio, setting up everything for the past seven days, all day long, morning till, till late at night. I got my setup done. Uh, yesterday I built this dresser. I'm recording everything by the way. So y'all have a setup video coming soon I recorded everything but like I said, it's not done yet, but the setup is done So I'm able to record videos here from now on on the channel uh, I want to have a, some sort of couch right here, but I'm still looking for a couch pretty much but I got a fridge got the desk got everything so um, 
all the future videos will be recorded here, you feel me? I wasn't even planning on, on getting a studio like a month ago, you feel me? But I just started looking at studios, started exploring my options, and I came across this room right here. And it's perfect so far, man. But things can change fast, like I said, if you just lock in, put your hat down, chase your dreams, you feel me? You got a vision, and a lot of people will doubt it, you feel me? That's what I what I'm trying to talk about, you feel me? I'm trying to tell my story, how I got to this point in today's video. But when chasing your dreams, um, you gotta get some sort of realization at some point. Cause when I first started making beats, when I dropped out of school, uh, I'll get more in, in depth into that story uh, later. But it's gonna be a lot of people that doubt you, you feel me? That don't really see your dreams like you do, you feel me? You got a dream in your head, someone gave you that dream, someone gave you that motivation. Um, and that means that Sometimes only you are able to see that motivation, that dream, that little spark, that idea, that something, you feel me, that, that nobody else sees and you can't really explain it to anybody since you're the only one that, that has got that idea, that dream, you feel me? So like I said, I wanted to get a little bit more in depth into my dream, my, my spark, my passion, my purpose, if, if you want to call it that. And I just want to start out by saying that I'm still chasing my purpose and, and finding my, my dreams and my goals, you feel me? Like I'm right in the middle of it. Like I haven't made it yet, you feel me? I've came a long way and I'm really, really grateful every single day, but I'm still in the grind, you feel me? Like I, I'm, I'm not stopping soon, anytime soon. But I can try my best to tell y'all how that started for me. Um, so I wanna go back to when I was like three years old, I believe. That's really when that, that, that music passion started for me because I got a lot of hobbies. I've tried a lot of things in life and I think that's really important to really be able to find your purpose or your passion or a thing that you really enjoy doing. Because if you just sit on your ass all day and not explore different hobbies, different activities, you won't really find the things that you like if you haven't tried it yet, you feel me? And that has always been some sort of personality trait of mine. I just want to, before I talk shit about something, before I speak on anything, I at least want to try it once before I talk on it, even before I give my opinions on, on things. So when I was four years old, I really wanted a drum kit. Um, to play the drums on, but my parents thought I was too young for it, you feel me, like, the idea will probably go away, but I remember just being so passionate, like, I probably seen someone play the drums, like, on the street, or maybe one of my friend's older brother, you feel me, but um, I really wanted to play the drums, so for my third or fourth birthday, I asked a drum set, like a drum kit, and my parents straight up told me no, you feel me, and I was hurt, you feel me, I, I figured, like, damn, I really want that drum kit, so when my fifth uh, birthday came, when I turned five, my parents once again asked me, what do you want for your birthday? And I still wanted that same drum kit. I've been thinking about that drum kit for a year. And I still wasn't really like able to play the drums anyway, you feel me? So my parents considered it and they still said no. So once again, one year goes by. Once again, they asked me, what do you want for your birthday? Once again, I hit them with the, let me get that drum kit. So they finally gave it to me, a small little drum kit. I'll try to find a picture and pop it up in the video. But I got that little, little ass drum kit, you feel me? Like, I finally got the drum kit that I wanted, you feel me? And right when I got it, I started playing the drums, man. Every single day, every single second. When I woke up till I went to sleep at night, bro, that little ass drum kit, <clears throat> I was playing it all day, man. But like I said, if I didn't get that drum kit, I wouldn't have known if I would like it or not, you feel me? So that's why I'm telling y'all to try out new things, explore new activities, hobbies, Take whatever, bro, like experiment with a lot of shit in life. And that's really where my, my passion for music came from. Uh, I was playing the drums every single day for about 10 years, I'd say. Uh, and then I quit. I don't even know. Like, I just fell out of love with, with the, the drumming part. Um, it might have been puberty. I don't even know. But I sold my drum kit when I was like 14, 15 years old, man. And, and that shit hurt. I ain't even gonna lie. And around that period of time where I was probably like 10 years old, 10 to 15 years old, I also wanted to become a YouTuber. Like, every single teenage a kid out there, you feel me? Like at some point, everybody had, has had a thought of becoming a full-time professional YouTuber, you feel me? And I had that period, that phase two. So I was recording videos um, outside of the, the playing the drums part. I had this iPod Touch fourth uh, generation. Uh, my dad gifted me that on my birthday, I believe. And I used to just record everything, man. Like record skits, record whatever. Not even posting it on YouTube. I didn't have no, no Google account, you feel me? Like I didn't even know how to post on YouTube, but I was recording YouTube videos for the fun of it. So in that period, I also fell in love with filming, you feel me? Like filming, editing videos. And I was like 11 years old. I didn't even know how to edit a video, but I was trying, you feel me? Like I really enjoyed just recording things. Two weeks later, looking at it and being like, damn, 
I can just relive that memory looking at a screen, you feel me? And that's also what I really enjoyed doing. And like I said, if I wouldn't have picked up that camera and just started recording, I probably would have never even known that I like to film, you feel me? That I like to edit videos, take pictures, all that stuff. Cause I've tried a lot of things in life, bro. I remember me playing football. I used to um, ride my skateboard all the time. I used to draw a lot. I did a lot of things just to find my purpose, you feel me? Since I'm a creative person myself and I enjoy doing creative stuff, but it's probably a million things that you can do to be creative, you feel me? So I was just trying to find my outlet into being creative. So when I turned 15 or 16, um, I graduated middle school and I wanted to go to film school since I was recording all the time and I really thought that that was my purpose. I wasn't really chasing music no more since I sold my drum kit like a few years prior to that, but I uh, went to college when I was 15 or 16 for uh, to film school, you feel me? That's, that's what I went to, that's what I decided to, to go for. And I was so convinced that filming and editing videos was my purpose, that that was the thing that I enjoyed doing, that that was the thing that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. But I was wrong, man. I didn't even go like, like I was that wrong. Cause the first year of that college, um, it was really global, you feel me? Like you had a lot of things and you would eventually like gravitate more towards one little category within that whole uh, creative film school, you feel me? I believe we had eight professions in that college. Um, I don't know all eight, but you had graphic design, uh, video editing, like I said, and a whole bunch of other things, drawing, all that stuff. But in my first year of that film school, I was forced to try out all the eight categories, you feel me? I was forced to just try out every single one for about a month, you feel me, um, that first school year. So the first year wasn't really nothing crazy. Um, I didn't know anybody at their school. So what I used to do is um, my first classes that I had, I had a lot of different classes uh, with a lot of different people in it within that first year. So what I used to do, go up to people, you feel me? If, if like three people were sitting at that table, I would just sat down and started talking to them. And I wasn't like, I've never been that person to really just go up to anybody and just start talking, you feel me? Like I don't really care about having a thousand friends, you feel me? I'd rather have three close gut friends uh, than a thousand friends that I barely know. But y'all know that creative schools usually got a lot of creative people, you feel me? Some weirdos, some real creative people, some people you dislike, some people you like, you feel me, might have become friends with. But uh, like I said, I was just going up to people and uh, talking to them for a little bit, like chopping it up a little bit, like seeing what their profession was, what they were onto, you feel me? So that's what I was doing within that first month of the, the first year when I went to college and didn't know anybody. And one day I went up to this guy named Julius, man. Shout out my dog, Julius. Uh, I was like 16 at the time, by the way. Right now, I'm uh, 21, but I got up to this guy. I seen him bopping his head, you feel me? He had earbuds in. And I remember just walking up to him and being like, what are you doing, basically, you feel me? He just looked at me, he's like, I'm making a beat. And I'm like, making a beat, what does that mean? You feel me? Like I've already listened to a lot of music in my life. Like I already knew what making beats was, but I didn't know what making beats was at the same time. Like I've never met anybody that knew how to make beats. You feel me? I just seen it on YouTube a couple times probably. And I sat down, I just looked at that shit and he said, yeah, I just made this shit from scratch. I listened to the beat, put the earbuds in. You feel me? Y'all can image what the classroom looked like, but um, I was just listening to that beat and I, remember just that, that that little music passion that I had, you feel me, back when I was around like fucking four, five, six years old, you feel me, I remember that shit coming back, bro. Like I felt that, that little spark coming back to life. Since I had sold my drum kit a few years prior to that, I was missing some, I had some sort of void in me, you feel me, since I really enjoyed making music, but I just fell out of love with uh, playing the drums. So when I looked at him making the beat from thin air, like he made a musical composition, a beat out of thin air, like, the beat wasn't there before he made it. And I remember just looking at that shit and being like, so I can make music out of thin air? You feel me? And that shit just blew my mind, bro. And like I said, I was always passionate about music. I was always listening to a lot of different music. And I remember just, just hitting that one spot in my heart, you feel me, that was dedicated to music. And I just felt that shit and I was like, bro, I gotta learn how to make beats, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm not leaving this school today without knowing how to make beats, you feel me? And of course it wasn't that simple, so I probably left the class and I seen uh, Julius, I seen him a couple of days after and I was like, bro, like, what's the software? How do I start making beats, all that stuff? And I had found a crack, my bad, of FL Studio a few like days or weeks after. So I downloaded it back in 2019, I believe, November 2019. I downloaded FL Studio on Mac, and I started making beats. I don't even know if you could call it a beat, but I just started messing around on the program, you feel me? Like I didn't even know 
what a beat was. I didn't even know what a tutorial was, you feel me? I didn't even know anybody that made music besides it, that one guy, Julius, you feel me, that I just met. So he showed me how to download it on my laptop. I got home that day, opened that bitch up when I got home, started messing around. And I did that same shit for, I'd say, over a week maybe. Every single day just trying to make a beat, make a melody, make something on that program on my laptop. And after that week, once again, I opened up my laptop, tried messing around on the program, and it didn't open, man. Like, the, the crack that he gave me stopped working, and I figured that was it, man. Like, I enjoyed making beats, but I figured, all right, that shit not working no more, and I'm not spending 200 bucks for FL Studio, so I guess that's it. So I just went about my day, you feel me, focused on my classes, uninstalled that shit off my laptop. Um, but something in me really enjoyed making music, you feel me? Like, I didn't even know how to make shit, but something in me just really enjoyed that part of making music out of thin air, you feel me? So a couple weeks go by, I had a few classes with Julius once again, and I seen him make beats, and I decided to buy FL Studio. You feel me? I was that good guy that bought FL Studio with this hard earned money. I remember working at a butcher and I spent my entire paycheck of like 200 bucks on buying FL Studio. So I was really dedicated to that shit, you feel me? Like I bought FL Studio back in November 2019, and that's where, where it all began, basically. And I remember after buying FL Studio, I just fell in love with that shit, man. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. I was making beats every single day. I didn't know what a tutorial was, so I was just experimenting, you feel me? And that shit was fun. Knowing, like, not knowing anything that you were doing, but just fucking around and making sounds, basically, without knowing if, if what you was doing was right or wrong. Looking back at it, um, was probably the most beautiful part about learning or starting making beats, you feel me? Not knowing whatever, like what you were doing, not knowing if something was right or wrong, not knowing if you were in key, if you were using the right sounds, if your melody sounded good, if your music theory was correct, you feel me? Like not knowing anything was probably the most beautiful phase in me learning how to make beats. Just really like putting all of your creativity into that shit and just your creativity taking over, not knowing if something was right or wrong, like I said. So I used to just go to school. Uh, within that first year, I was still like 16 around that point. And for that whole first year, I just fell in love with making beats. So I used to go to school, just open up my laptop, sit down, make beats all day, just do my little assignments here and there, you feel me? But just barely going through on the college shit, but just focusing on making beats since I really enjoyed it. And I also had my laptop with me since I was in film school, like I said. So I used to have to use my laptop for every single class that I had, but instead of just focusing on that class, I was just making beats, you feel me? So that's pretty much what I was doing in that first year. And since I already knew that I wanted to pursue filmmaking within that college, um, going forward in the second year of that college, I didn't have trouble making that decision. So by the end of the first year, they asked me what kind of lane I wanted to pursue, you feel me, uh, within those eight, eight categories that they gave you. And immediately I went for the video editing since that was my purpose, you feel me? That's the, the thing that I had been doing prior to going to that college for my entire life. So like I said, I really thought that that was my, my life path, my passion, my purpose, you feel me? So the summer break comes around, you feel me? Uh, within that first and second year of that college. And after the summer break, that means that the only thing that I'm gonna be doing in that college is filmmaking. So uh, filming, and video editing at least that's what i thought so like i said summer break goes by making a couple beats here and there just enjoying my time not really knowing what i'm doing maybe recording a few videos just for fun and before you know it summer break is over and the second year of that college starts the filmmaking school you feel me like the first year was just a little practice round you feel me i already knew what i was going to do so that didn't really matter but that second year, that's what I thought was gonna be the, the biggest thing of my life. Like I finally get to film and like edit videos and really enjoy my passion, find my passion, chase my purpose, edit videos all day. I was so excited, you feel me, for that second year of that college. Like that first year didn't really matter, but the first, uh, the first year, like I said, didn't really matter, but the second, third, and fourth year, you feel me? Like that was the whole reason why I even went to that school in the first place. So first day of the second year, I walk in all fresh. You feel me? I walk into the film school. I'm like, all right, bring it on, man. Like I fully fuck the beat making shit. Like I don't even care about that at this point. Bring me the camera and I'm gonna edit this video. And remember, I had already been recording and editing videos all my life. So I already knew the basics. I was already well experienced within the video editing and, and all the softwares and all that stuff. So my first class, I sit down, Teacher pulls up, I'm like, I bet, bring it on. Motherfucker turns on the, the projector, you feel me? First class, what is a camera? And I'm looking at that screen and I'm like, 
you feel me? Like, oh, who, who doesn't know what a camera is? You feel me? And he starts talking about all the basics, what filming is, you feel me? All the resolutions. And I'm like, bro, I'm here to record videos. You feel me? But I'm like, you know what? That doesn't really matter. It's probably some shit you got to cover in the first three lessons. And after that, I get to edit videos all day. After those first couple classes, we get to record a few things and we get scripts. And I'm like, so I don't get to decide what I record. And they're like, no, you got to record this shit. And I'm like, you feel me? That's not really that creative, but I guess that's, that's what it takes to, to get to the editing part or the recording part. So I just follow all the classes. I was, um, I was just pulling up to all the classes. You feel me? Like just doing every assignment that was handed to me. It got boring very quick after that, man. Like I was just, you feel me? Like going to class and just, um, doing all the assignments, like I said, and we would get a deadline for four weeks in the future. And I'm like, we get a deadline for four weeks in the future and we get to work on this, this whole project for four weeks straight. And I'm looking at the assignment and I'm like, I can do this shit in a day, bro. Like, <laughs> fuck, I need four weeks for it. I, I can't finish this shit up in one day since I'm already experienced in filming and all that stuff. So we got four weeks. I get to do it in a day and still pass the assignment. So I'm like, what the f am I going to do for the whole four weeks, bro? You feel me? Like the assignment ain't that crazy. So I'm sitting there like, all right, I guess I'm going to just procrastinate. <laughs> you feel me? Like I'm not doing the assignment on the first day that I get the assignment. I'm waiting on the last hour to hand in the assignment. You feel me? The last hour of the fourth week to hand in the assignment. So the first three weeks, I don't even have to think about it. So what do I do? Pulling up to all the classes within the first three weeks. I open up my laptop and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that assignment. I'm going to just worry about that shit in four weeks. I'm going to start making beats. Once again, you feel me? Like I had already been making beats for about a year. So I was making some sort of sample, some sort of beats. You feel me? I still, I still didn't even know what a tutorial was that people were uploading tutorials on YouTube. I didn't even know that I could learn how to make beats, but I could at least make a decent sounding beat. So I was just going to classes, opening up my laptop, making beats all day for three weeks straight. That fourth week comes around, open up my laptop, you feel me? Just wrap up that assignment real quick, edit that video. Like I said, I was procrastinating, hand in that video. And I remember getting a good ass grade for that as well. You feel me? I spent only a day of those four weeks on that assignment and I got a good ass grade. So I'm like, bro, the bar is really set low. You feel me? Like I didn't have to try, you feel me? So I'm still making up excuses. I'm like, right, that's probably the first assignment. They probably want to start off easy. But after that, you feel me? I really get to learn how to really edit videos and all that stuff. But second assignment, same shit. Third assignment, same shit. You feel me? Y'all get four weeks to hand in. This video has got to be edited, recorded. After four weeks, you got to pull up to all the classes, show me what y'all got. And I just did the same shit. I procrastinated for the four weeks. The first four weeks, I was just making beats all day, really enjoying how to make beats. Just editing that video at the last, the last day of that four weeks, you feel me? Just handing it in and passing all my classes. And that first assignment didn't really bother me. I'm like, all right, it's the first assignment, you feel me? Second assignment, I didn't really mind, but everything after that second assignment, I was just so bored in all those classes, bro. I'm like, I wasn't even getting challenged in those classes. And that's really how I kind of fell out of love with the film school, you feel me? Like I was so excited going to film school like a year and a half prior to that, but I just fell out of love with it since I wasn't getting challenged. I was just getting taught the bare basics of video editing that I already knew since I was already recording videos and editing shit for a long time. So I'm sitting there like, I'm not learning a damn thing, bro. And the teachers were so impressed about my work and all that stuff that I figured if I got three years left of this college. I'm just wasting my time. Like I, I'm not even learning anything at that point. Cause let's say I already knew 95% about what that, that college had to offer. I was only learning 5% for three years. You feel me? So I figured I, right, I'm gonna just not pull up to the class no more, man. <laughs> and that might not have been the smartest decision to make at that point or just not pulling up to the classes. But I remember just going to the classes since of course I had to go to some classes to um, not get kicked out of the college, but I was just pulling up to the classes making beats. So at one point um, I got up to my teacher and I just straight up told him this story. I'm like, I, I don't think that I'm learning anything here. You feel me? So um, like I said, you had those eight, those eight professions within that college. And I just figured, you know what? I'm gonna just try something totally opposite. I'm gonna just try graphic design, Photoshop, all that stuff. I had never touched Photoshop a day in my life, but I figured might as well just learn something that I don't, I don't know anything about 
instead of just learning that 5% that I had left in those three years. You feel me? I figured to just start off fresh with something that I was a little less interested in, but that I could learn a lot from, you feel me? But that meant that I had half a year of school left that I just basically quit, you feel me? Like I was pulling up to some classes, but I decided to make a change and repeat that second year, but in a different profession in the, the graphic design side instead of the video editing side. So basically that last half a year of that video editing part, it didn't really matter. Even if I completed all my assignments, you feel me? It didn't really matter since I wasn't going to the third year. Like I was doing the second year over again in a different in a different niche within that college. So it didn't really matter. So once again, I was just pulling up to school, making beats, pulling up to classes, making beats and not really focusing too much on the assignments that were handed to me um, on the video editing side, the filmmaking side. So after that second year, once again, summer break comes around and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just start fresh. I'm gonna download Photoshop and just experiment a little bit before I actually start with the classes so I, I know a little bit about graphic design and how Photoshop works and build a little portfolio to show them, you feel me? And keep in mind, I was still making beats every single day in that period. Even though I was still going to college and I wasn't really planning on really pursuing music since I was really enjoying it, but not really in a way that I was willing to pursue it. Like that didn't really seem realistic to me. I was just doing it for fun as a hobby, but I was excited for the, the fresh start. You feel me like the graphic design stuff that I didn't really know a lot about that I could learn a lot about. I was excited for that. So summer break, you feel me? First day of school comes around the first day of the second year since I started all over again. And I was pretty excited, like I said, for that first day, and this is how that first day went, bro. By the way, I got a studio, but I can stand up all I want. This is how the first day went, bro, of that second year, the graphic design year. I pull up to the class, and my class was probably something about Photoshop, you feel me? So I pull up to the class, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna learn something, at least today. So I sit in class, I, I remember sitting in the front of that class too, bro, front row of that class, I'm sitting. Like, I'm ready, bro, I got my laptop pulled up, got all the tools set up, you feel me? I already got Photoshop opened up on my laptop. I'm ready, bro. So I'm sitting in front row, ready as fuck, waiting on the damn teacher to walk in, bro. First day of school too, bro. After the summer break, first day. And I'll remember, bro, sitting on that first row, I'm sitting right here, right? Teacher walking into class, walking in like, all right, welcome class. Today, I'm gonna teach y'all about photography. And I'm like, bro, photography, you feel me? I'm here for graphic design. I'm here for Photoshop, you feel me? Making magazines, making something. And the damn teacher talking about photography. So I'm like, hold on, am I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm in the wrong class, you feel me? Like, of course I'm not in the right class since I didn't go for photography since one of the eight modules was photography. And instead of photography, I picked graphic design. So I'm thinking, you know what? I might've been in the, in the wrong class since photography is written all on the whiteboard. I'm like, of course I'm in the wrong class. But I'm like, I'ma just wait it out, you feel me? The teacher pulls out a piece of paper, starts doing the attendance, and my name is on that attendance list. So I'm in that class for, I'd say about 15 minutes, just listening to the teacher doing his, his attendance and, and talking about photography basics. And 15 minutes go by, Unc is still talking about the attendance and, and photography basics. And I'm starting to get confused, cause why is Unc still talking about photography after 15 minutes? So I raise my hand. I'm like, I think something might have went wrong. You feel me? Like, I don't remember being interested in photography at any point in my life. So I don't know why photography is written all on the whiteboard. No offense to anybody who's into photography, but that's just me. And I remember vividly asking the teacher that question. And what he told me blew my mind, bro. I remember him saying, yeah, uh, we discussed with all the teachers and all the staff at the school. And since nobody signed up for photography, we figured we'd just pick out a bunch of random kids out of all random classes and put them in a photography class to show them how interesting photography actually is and that y'all might have made a mistake not signing up for photography instead. That shit absolutely blew my mind, bro. I just looked at him and I was like, then I'm not following this class. What the f*** is he talking about, bro? I remember just getting up and leaving the classroom, bro. I just walked out with my backpack on, you feel me? And after that first class, I remember, I maybe turned up to a handful of classes after that, and I remember just quitting. I quit college, I was like, all right, the filmmaking part, you feel me, I'm not really learning anything from that, and this graphic design bullshit, you feel me? Bro, photography? I'm like, hell no, nah, bro, I'm, I ain't doing all that. So I just walked out, signed out, and that's it. No more college, no more school. 
That's it. And if I wasn't making beats at that point in my life, I probably wouldn't have dropped out. But I was so passionate. I was so into music that I had a plan B. I really enjoyed making music. So I was like, all right, this photography, graphic design stuff is not for me. I already knew how to make thumbnails and, and graphic design a little bit since I self-taught it myself. So I dropped out, like I said. And that also meant that I didn't go to college no more. I just had to wake up, get up, and that was it. You feel me? I was in my room at home and I didn't have to go to college. That might have sounded like a dream in my head. You feel me? I get to make beats all day. I get to wake up every day and just do whatever I want every single day. And for the first two weeks, that's probably what I did. But after that, I was, I think I was 18 um, or 19. I believe I was 19 at that point since already three years had gone by. Um, within that college, I was around 19. So I remember just being at home every single day, no college, no real life friends that I had at that school since I skipped classes, I, I switched lanes, I switched modules, you feel me? I, I changed classes a lot. So I wasn't really with my friends that I had in that first year anymore. Julius had also quit that school because of the same reason, you feel me? Like he didn't enjoy that school no more. So while all my friends were going to college, to that college and enjoying their classes, I was stuck at home, you feel me? By myself, I'm like, all right, I get all the free time. I didn't have no job, you feel me? I might have had a job for a little period, but I wasn't working full time. I had no money. And that was all happening about three years ago. So that first year, I'm just fast forward a little bit since I've been yapping for a minute, but I remember that first year, I was just making beats, maybe making two beats a day, just really learning how to make beats, you feel me? I was stuck at the crib all day. I didn't have nothing to do, so I was just making beats. And at that period, I also uh, created my YouTube channel and I was just uploading beats on my YouTube channel, you feel me? Like I just recently discovered YouTube tutorials, um, FL Studio tutorials on how to make beats. So since I was sitting on my ass at the crib all day, I was on the internet a lot. So um, since I already had the tools to graphic design, I would just on go on Discords, Discord servers and um, message people um, asking them to make a YouTube banner or a kit cover for drum kits and all that stuff. And for the people that have been following me for a long time, y'all know that I used to graphic design a lot of kit covers, uh, banners and thumbnails and all that stuff about two or three years ago. So that first year, like I said, I would just on Discord a lot, talking to a lot of uh, different people, uh, making a lot of friends online and just making a lot of banners, you feel me? Like uh, making a little money on the side. And that also showed me that you could make a little bit of money. I wasn't making a lot of money. Like I was selling YouTube banners for a, around $15, you feel me? But that really showed me that I was able to make money online sitting in my room, making banners, you feel me? Like, like I said, I wasn't making a lot of money, but it proved to me that you could make money online without working a physical job in person. So that's what I was doing for about a year. You feel me? Like that first year after I um, dropped out of college, I was just making banners, just making new friends online, meeting a lot of producers, still making beats um, since I was really passionate about making beats. You feel me? Like I was making beats every single day, but I wasn't really too serious about the beat making part because I was uploading beats on YouTube, like I said, but they weren't really getting any views, uh, maybe a hundred views. You feel me? But I was more focused on making money through the YouTube banner. I was so passionate about music, but as a hobby, like I wasn't planning on taking that music shit serious, you feel me? But I was still making music every single day, you feel me? Since I really enjoyed making music, but I wasn't really trying to take it serious. So eventually after doing the same shit every single day, just making banners and all that stuff, I kind of got burnt out a little bit, you feel me? I got a little confused, like, what do I want to do? You feel me? Like I'm sitting on my ass all day at the crib, not making no money, not working a job. I'm making a little pocket change through the banners, but graphic design, like I said, wasn't really something that I was trying to do, but I had a lot of hobbies. You feel me? I enjoyed recording. I enjoyed, really enjoyed video editing. I enjoyed graphic design, but not full time. You feel me? But I was really passionate about the music part, but I wasn't trying to do music to make money. You feel me? I was doing it as a hobby, but not as me making music to make a million dollars, you feel me? So one night, my mom comes up to me. I was 20 at the time. My mom comes up to me and she's like, I want you to go to college again. And I'm like, I can see why, because I'm sitting on my ass all day and they probably don't even know what I'm doing, you feel me? They just think that I'm sitting on my ass all day playing video games. So we start looking at music colleges. Um, so colleges for um, music production, I don't even know what's out there, you feel me? And I remember signing up to, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's basically you going to that school for one day, just trying out the school, just seeing what it's all about. 
And I remember signing up for that. It was almost the start of a new school year. So I remember me signing up for that shit, that program and going to the school. And I remember pulling up to that, that music school, walking in, seeing a lot of different classes that were there, experiencing a lot of different teachers. You feel me? Like a lot of different classes that, that, that college had to offer. And I remember just being in that environment, like that school environment for music like something that I do as a hobby and it just brought back all the shit that I was doing prior to that, you feel me? Like the, the video editing, going to school for video editing and just getting bored and not learning anything. So that day I was feeling the same way. I get taught something that I already know a lot about in school, in class, and it kind of brought back all those memories and, and I got home and went to bed, bro. So the next day I wake up, I probably sat on the edge of my bed and I really thought, I really thought for, I'd say maybe, two hours straight, bro. I just sat on my bed and thought, bro. And at that time, I was still posting beats on my YouTube channel, um, and I probably gained around a thousand subs. And I was really expecting myself to become successful overnight, basically. Someone just handed me a career in music to be able to pursue music, you feel me? I was just waiting on that shit, and that's what I realized, sitting on the edge of my bed at that moment. Like, I'm waiting on something to happen that I'm not even doing anything for for that to even happen, you feel me? So that that really like blew my mind. That really brought me a realization, man. And while I'm thinking that, I'm also thinking about the going to college, you feel me? My mom wants me to go to college and pursue that music career, you feel me? Go to school for that. And it also got this thought of me just not doing anything to pursue my career by myself. And at that point, I just realized that no one's gonna do it for me. If I want this shit to work out, if I wanna make it happen, you feel me? I gotta lock in and do it all by myself. No one's gonna help me, it's all me. If I succeed, it's cause of me. If I fail and it doesn't work out, it's also cause of me. I can't blame nobody for, for me not doing anything. So I remember that time, Nardo Wick was going viral, you feel me? Like he just dropped that one song, that hit song, uh, I believe it's called Who Wants Smoke? And I remember everybody on the internet going crazy about that song. Um, so I listened to the song, of course, and I was like, bro, that's a hard ass song. Let me just try to make a beat that sounds like that. And like I said, I was aware of the YouTube FL Studio tutorials. So I open up my computer, you feel me? I look up how to make a Nardo Wick type beat and I'm scrolling and I'm not seeing any results. So I'm like, bro, no one made a tutorial on how to make Nardo Wick beats. And he's probably one of the most popping artists at that moment. So I'm like, fuck it, you feel me? I'm gonna just teach myself how to make Nardo Wick beats. You feel me? How to make those hard trap beats. So I lock in for about two or three months, really like locking in on the Nardo Wick beats. I'm only making hard, dark trap shit. You feel me? Like making Nardo Wick beats for two, three months straight, really locking in, really trying to achieve that sound. Um, and I got pretty decent at it. I knew how to make a good beat about a year and a half ago because this was all happening about a year and a half ago, you feel me? So within those two, three months of me locking in on the Nardo Wig Beats, I'm still looking up tutorials on how to make Nardo Wig Beats, just hoping that someone made a tutorial focusing on that genre, that sound. And I remember still nothing, no tutorials about how to make those types of beats, you feel me? And since I had locked in and taught everything myself and I knew how to make those beats, one and one equals two. I decide to record my screen, making a Nardo Wick tutorial from scratch, no face cam, no commentary, just a Nardo Wick tutorial, just a screen playing, screen recording, how to make uh, Nardo Wick type beats, how to make beats for Nardo Wick, maybe editing the video just a little bit and just posting it on YouTube. I'm like, might as well help the community out, upload the first how to make a Nardo Wick beat tutorial on YouTube. And I'm like, you know what? Like I said, I'm just help the people out that are trying to learn how to make those types of beats. And at that time, still, I was uploading beats to my YouTube channel. I was consistently uploading beats for a year and a half and I had just gained over a thousand subs. It's decent, but it's not, the views weren't really that crazy. Let me just say that. So I remember uploading that tutorial and of course it wasn't really getting no views since I didn't really have no subscribers or the video didn't have no face cam, no commentary, no nothing. And I remember just leaving it, you feel me? Leaving the video up and I was just going back, uploading beats every single day on that channel. And I remember like two months going by and out of nowhere I wake up with a hundred new subs and I'm like bro what did a beat blow up you feel me like what the fuck happened and I remember in December 2022 I believe I believe that's when I uploaded that tutorial I remember that tutorial going crazy like a thousand views every single day a hundred new subs every single day and that shit was crazy to me you feel me since I wasn't really getting no views on my beats but all of a sudden, I'm getting thousands of views on my Nardo Wick FL Studio tutorial without face cam and, and without commentary. The video is still up on this channel today, by the way. So I'm thinking, you know what? I might as well make a new tutorial since no one gives a fuck about my beats and everybody's enjoying that Nardo Wick tutorial. 
might as well make another tutorial. So once again, pull up my screen recording. I start recording my screen, no face cam, no commentary, no nothing. I remember just making a beat. I remember being a Drake type beat or something like that. And I just uploaded it to my YouTube channel once again. And while my Nardo Wick tutorial was going crazy, I remember posting that video, that Drake tutorial, I believe. And that shit got more views within five minutes than my beat got that I posted like three months ago. So I'm like, all right, no one cares about my beats, but people care about my tutorials. People want to see my tutorials, me making the beats instead of just me posting the beats. And that was a year and a half ago. And since then, I just didn't quit. I had that realization sitting on the edge of my bed that I had to lock in. And I saw that people were enjoying my tutorials. So I figured might as well lock in on that. And I didn't quit, man. And now I got my own car, like I said, got my own studio and 50,000 subs on YouTube, man. And we not stopping, man, we not stopping. And looking at where I'm at at life at this point, I kind of combined every single hobby that I've had in my entire life. Right now I'm filmmaking, I'm recording, you feel me? I got my own camera. I was able to purchase my own camera off of this shit right here. I edit my own videos, so I get to edit videos. I get to make music, make beats in front of the camera, you feel me? The making music part, I get to do that. I get to graphic design my kit covers, my thumbnails. I do everything myself. So I basically combined all of my hobbies into one package and that's what I'm doing today, man. And that's how I gained 50,000 subs on this channel by combining all of my hobbies into something that not a lot of people do, that not a lot of people are willing to take the risk for it. You feel me? So the advice that I'm trying to give is to not copy me. Don't copy what I'm doing. Y'all might not be into filming. Y'all might not be to into editing, into teaching people, since that's also a thing that I've always told myself, if everything fails, I'm becoming a teacher, since I've always enjoyed teaching people new stuff, you feel me? So my main message for today's video is to try out a lot of things. Try out every single opportunity that you get. If one of your friends wants to go to a studio and make beats and you don't even know what making beats is, just go with them. If one of your friends bought a new camera, go and check it out. Maybe you like it, you feel me? Just make sure that you try out a lot of things and try to find as many hobbies as you can, as many things that you enjoy doing, you feel me? And just pursue whatever you think is right at that moment in your life, you feel me? Like, I was pursuing filmmaking and all that stuff at some point. Like, I was really locked into that shit. I was really convinced that that was my purpose, that that was my goal in life. Turns out it wasn't, you feel me? It was actually a lot more shit that I could combine into one to, to get even more creative, you feel me? Like, to really enjoy what I'm doing every single day, waking up with a purpose, enjoying your life, actually doing something that you love to do, man. And that's what I've been doing for the last year and a half, man. That's pretty much my story, that's where I'm at in my life and I'm sure a lot of things will change from this point moving forward but I'm just doing what I love waking up every single day I'm grateful man to to do the things that I love every single day you feel me to be able to to teach a lot of people through the internet through a camera through YouTube you feel me that I'm able to inspire a lot of people and like I said just do the things that I love every single day so once again man I really want to thank y'all for 50,000 subscribers on the channel, man. That plaque coming soon, man. We we halfway there, bro. And for the ones who are still watching the video, man, really want to thank y'all. Really appreciate y'all for watching the video all the way to the end, man. Really means a lot, for real. Like, from the bottom of my heart, everybody watching the video to this point, really appreciate y'all, man. Y'all the real ones, man. If there's any topics that y'all want me to cover, make sure to leave a comment in the comments down below, man. And like I said, every single video moving forward is going to be in this studio right here. I want to thank y'all for watching once again. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.